Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the relationship between Azure AI, Fabric, and Azure Integration Services. Um, before we jump into the video, quick thanks to Table360 who helped me run the channel and helped me with some of my videos. Now, the background to this um, talk was I was at the MSP Partner Day organized by Climb in the UK recently. Now, I was watching one of the sessions and got chatting to um, one of the guys from Microsoft about the AI strategy. And, and in some of the messaging, it was very focused on talking about AI and the relationship to Fabric. And what I was kind of saying is I felt like Azure Integration Services should be part of this message in a, in a more explicit way. And I think there's a few examples I'd like to talk about in terms of architecture about how Azure Integration Services really empowers the Fabric plus Azure AI strategy. And I kind of want to just brain dump some of my thoughts about what this looks like. So if we think about what a typical um, architecture diagram would look like um, at, a, at a super high level, we've got the box down here where we're talking about the Azure AI services. So we've got things like AI speech, AI translator, the things that were really the, the cognitive services area. And we've got AI Studio for helping you develop your AI solutions. Um, on top of that, we've got the different applications consuming AI. So I'm, I'm going to come back to the Azure OpenAI bit in a minute. But we've really got things like if it's a channel art control, I might have my own application as a consumer of AI. I might have something like bot service if I want to support multi-channel, some mobile web apps all that kind of thing and then we've got copilot studio if your channel's going to be through microsoft 365 now as part of the ai services piece we've got the open ai um, offering on azure and, th and there's a couple of ways that that kind of gets you so you're consuming that ai and you might be just interacting with it in a kind of chat type manner um and you're leveraging the llm um from within open ai but also you have use cases where you might connect OpenAI to the search and you might give it access to data sources that it's going to use to help enrich the data it's going to return to you. So you may be using things like storage and SQL. And then, so that that's kind of just one, one view of some of the architectures. Now, I think when I was doing a bit of research on this, I was looking through the Azure Architecture Center and I felt like a lot of the reference architectures didn't really include Azure integration services in the right way. And these are some of the things I'm going to talk about in this video. So bringing Fabric into the picture, we've got the same kind of idea with the consumers of AI at the top. We've got our Azure Open AI service here. Now, really, what I'm viewing Data Lake or One Lake within Fabric as probably being the data source that... Um, your AI is going to be using for, you know, querying data and, and generating responses based on info it knows is in Fabric. Now, one of the benefits with Fabric is you've got the data factory component. So you've got things like databases and other applications in your ecosystem where you can pull data into your data lake as part of Fabric. And that'll give you more information that your, your AI can leverage in its responses. And then obviously in Fabric, you've got um, Power BI that can leverage your data. And, and then, you know, the co-pilot idea, you, you end up with things like co-pilot embedded in some of these components of Power BI can leverage co-pilot to query this data and then AI empower Power BI. Now, for me, that this is where, when I was looking at some of the messaging from Microsoft, this is kind of where this, this diagram kind of stopped. And I wanted to go and explore some of the options that open up if you add Azure integration services to this diagram. So really we then think about, um, you know, first off, let's think about Fabric. So what are the ingestion points into Fabric? So currently, if we open up that Fabric um, data area, we've really got things like the dedicated data warehouse, and then the KQL databases. So the ingestion into those would usually be some kind of data flow in Data Factory, which may pull the, the data into the data warehouse, for example. And then we've got things like the Event Hub here, which can stream ingest into the KQL database. Now, 
what that means is that if we put Azure Integration Services into this equation, so let's put this on the bottom here, and there's a couple of differences. So you'll notice obviously here we've got various systems that are involved, but they're kind of external to the data platform and the integration platform. So we've still got data being ingested into our fabric here um, through things like data factories and stuff but typically those pipeline ingestions they're going to be more schedule and time based and they're going to be focused more on larger data sets and what you would tend to find in an organization is your integration platform is going to be focused much more on a transaction so let's imagine we've got things like sap publishes a message to your integration platform you've got things like logic apps service bus etc who will then integrate that into one of the services and the, and the real difference would be in the azure integration services i'm probably thinking about a customer makes an order that order integrates into other systems whereas in the fabric and data factory scenario we'd probably look at get a list of all of the orders for today and ingest those into my data warehouse the, these are two very different things in terms of the frequency and timing of when they would happen and the time dimension of how long we cover and also the amount of data but the beauty of it is with um with the zero integration services we've got two types of data moving around the organization at this point and what i can do is things like the ingestion from azure integration services we can leverage pushing data to that event hub which gets it into this kql database so suddenly all of our transactional data becomes usable within fabric but also i can if you notice this arrow is two ways so i can use scenarios where i push data into the data warehouse but i also pull data from the data warehouse and use azure integration services to in, to like you know push that data to other systems so using the relationship between a data platform and an integration platform is really a powerful one that we talk about a lot anyway but the key bit is now we've got ai sitting on top of your data platform that then becomes a great data source for your um for your ai to leverage and then the other thing i guess is that as we take it further the AI is using data from your data platform your integration platform put in but also your integration platform can use the AI directly as part of a business process orchestration or something like that, where it can use it to help decide decisions about what to do with stuff and how to you know transform processes and things. So there's a lot of really great opportunities start open up the minute you throw a zero integration into the mix as well. Now, what I wanted to do next was think about a few reference architectures that could be considered just to show, you know, instead of being super, super high level like the last slide, what might a solution look like? And hopefully this will start painting this picture a little bit. So let's imagine we've got a scenario where we process invoices. And I'm thinking of a real world project I worked on a few years ago where this was quite a challenging use case to do because the the person over here who's the you know third party they access the website and what they might do is they might have a paper invoice for a service they've delivered and what they might do is take a picture of it and upload it to the website so the website saves it into storage and then it calls an api to say the invoice has been uh, received here's the location go and process it now what could happen here so the website would call apim which triggers an orchestration process in logic apps so the logic app could use the ai vision component from cognitive services to process that um that invoice uh, that invoice document and try and you know use the image to maybe transform it into some text or something like that and then we can you know we can start evaluating what that um invoice looks like and it, it probably you know thinking about putting ai into the equation here the challenge we had back on this project was we have hundreds of providers that had invoices in totally different formats and it became quite difficult to like transcribe and and kind of pull the text out of those but ai should really help you solve that problem significantly and then the next thing we might do is actually go and 
use something like OpenAI to look at the invoice and kind of digest what's going on with that invoice. So we might be able to pull out things like, you know, from the text, what are the procedures that have happened for this invoice? So maybe we've had some kind of medical invoice and we've got, you know, a procedure for a dental treatment or something like that. So you can start working out what are the treatments, what, you know, maybe things like what would the ICD-9 or 10 code be for this procedure that you've had? And you can you can go from just having a, you know, from an image, we've gone through to some text and now we've gone through to some context. So we know what the, what the makeup of that invoice is. And then the Logic app then knows that, well, actually now we have a bunch of systems we need to update. So we'd go and update the sales system. We might update the CRM and then update the finance system to let everybody know about this invoice we've received. And if everything's good, we might then use Exchange to ping an invoice, uh, ping an email to the um, user to say, look, we've processed your invoice successfully. Here's a bit of info about what we've done. And that, that would be a really great process sitting in the background. Now, the next thing that we've done that um, is something Kent we did a video about a little while ago, which I really liked, where We've got these AI assistant actions that you can have in Azure Open AI. So let's imagine we've got a, you know, we've got our user here. We've got our website, and it's integrating with this um, help assistant. And certain prompts that the user can do can actually trigger Logic Apps. So, for example, the user might say, um, "Let me go and." You know, let me get the information about my my customer. So it might call a logic app. Let, let's imagine, you know, there's a few quite interesting things here. So number one, I might not have already set up Fabric and have a data warehouse with all the data in it. So I don't have a customer data source easily accessible. But also I might not have, um, you know, my data warehouse might be stale. So I might want to say, get the absolute real-time information for this customer. And I may go through a logic app, query my, you know, my customer system, whether it be Dynamics or something else, and get the information and then show that to the user. And then I might, um, I might then go and say, you know, oh, let's increase this user's um, credit limit. So that might call a separate logic app because the prompt indicated the intent to perform an action. And that logic app might integrate with SAP to update their credit limit because you've decided that customer is a good one. And what we've really done is we've allowed the AI to drive some kind of orchestration through a chat model exposed through a custom web app for your user. So we've integrated that into some backend systems where appropriate, which I think would be really cool. Um, next up, we've got the similar scenario but we also have, we've gone further down our journey and we've got fabric in the equation as well. So now the, the user, we may have ditched our, um, you know, we've ditched our custom web app and we've gone into Copilot and Copilot's integrating with OpenAI. And the AI can leverage the data in our, in our fabric data warehouse. We've got some ingestion from different systems. So we've got much more context rich data about our users, about our customers and our products and everything. So the AI is just going to become more powerful in terms of what it can offer up. But those actions are still relevant. So we can still have prompts would drive an action to update SAP and so on. And, and we just make, you know, we're evolving our architecture from that initial fairly simple architecture. We add more power to it by giving it more data to use. I think another interesting one could be the you know the really where the integration services comes into play is when we cross system boundaries. So a really good example would be let's say I've got um, a customer and a sales representative or something like that. They have a Teams meeting, and we um, we have the meetings recorded. It goes into stream, and obviously we've got things like Copilot that can. You know, sit on top and um, you can query things like the transcriptions and stuff like that from the video. Now, that might be enough, but what if you want to go to the next level? So we might say, have a power automate that crosses the system boundary from the Teams ecosystem in the Office 365 to your enterprise integration. 
So we might publish a message to say, you know, user clicked a Teams button, said, yeah, we're happy with this video, publish it. That sort of goes out now available for other systems. So we could have things like a Logic app could query stream and get the transcript from the video. We could then use OpenAI to say things like, tell me the products the customer was interested in from this sales call. Tell me the um, the risk of this customer churning. Tell me the risk of, you know, whatever. Or tell me interesting things about this video. And then from our integration platform, we can update various systems. So maybe we, you know, we indicate in the finance system the customer's at risk of churning. So we can manage that from a finance perspective or something. Um, maybe in our sales, we create leads for new things the customer might be interested in because there was an expressed intent to learn more about a certain feature. And we, maybe, you know, maybe we know from our product backlog, they've said they're interested in feature A or problem A. Chat, uh, you know, the, the chat integration with um, OpenAI tells us if you're interested in this problem, we have this feature on our backlog that could, you know, solve that and we can register that as a sales lead. And, and then we're kind of taking that video and creating leads from it would be quite cool as well. Um, so what I wanted to really get across in this video is just go through some potential reference architectures where Adnosia integration services into a pattern where we have Azure AI and we have Fabric. How do we make this even better? So Azure integration services could be on its own with Azure AI and be really powerful. But if we chuck Fabric in there as well, that adds so much more context that the three of them can give you a really cool solution. Thank you for listening to today's video. I'd love to, you know, this is me just spitballing my ideas and um, AI is something I'm learning much more about these days. So I'd love to hear feedback from people about what things do they think don't work in this video, what things are interesting and people, you know, add comments of your experiences that you think add some value to this video and it's about helping everybody learn.